Uh, I'm so excited to talk to you, Kat. Uh, congrats on the show. First and foremost, I am a She-Hulk super fan. I've read all of her solo comics and you guys did such a perfect job. Like you, you nailed it. Um, how does it feel to have the season out into the world and have people reacting to it? It feels so freeing. There are so many secrets you have to keep. And now I feel like we can talk about everything. I imagine. So having gone to the premiere, having watched the screener so many times before the show even premiered, one element of the show that I was, I'm was i so happy is out into the world is Madison. Um, what was it like to kind of help create the best character of Phase 4? Um, well, I have worked with Patty so many times. And when I brought her up for Madison, there was a little bit of resistance because nobody knew who she was. And I said, guys, just let her audition. And she came in and auditioned and everybody was in tears. And the thing about Patty Guggenheim is that she's able to play these ridiculous characters with so much grounding and these characters who maybe don't appear very smart with so much intelligence. Um, so I kind of have been waiting for this moment to launch Patty for many, many years. And so it's kind of like, okay, the rest of the world has caught up. Now let's please give her her own movie. Yes. Oh, my gosh, please. Um, I also have to ask about Daredevil. Um, the Internet is on fire shipping him and Jen after the last two episodes. Uh, what has surprised you kind of the most about crafting that dynamic as a director? Because their chemistry on screen is just palpable. I have to say it was one of the things I was most nervous about because he has such a rabid fan base and because people expect certain things. And yet we're, you know, subverting his genre a little bit. Um, and so I'm so glad that people love it. And, um, you know, I really I did go back and watch so many hallway fights to make sure that we drew elements from them, you know, while still placing it squarely in She-Hulk's world. I love it. Um, we have to talk about the finale. I know you have a Kevin hat behind you. Um, I can't wait for those to be for sale because I would I would love to own one. Um, what was it like to film in the Marvel offices first and foremost? I can imagine that must have been crazy. You know, filming in the Marvel offices was something that was very, very important to me. And there were moments where we were scouting, um, you know, in Atlanta and it never felt right because it felt like we needed those little Easter eggs. And, you know, the receptionist in the scene is the real receptionist at Marvel who auditioned along with a bunch of actors and scored the part. And, you know, when you see the Iron Man in the background, that's part of the Marvel offices. And so, you know, the Disney lot is so iconic. And so that was something that was really, really important. Um, to all of us um, to capture. And I'm so glad we got to do it for real. That's amazing. And then Kevin, I know I spoke to Jessica yesterday and she was talking about all the different iterations of Kevin that kind of got brought to life. What was it like to ultimately deal with essentially the big crux of your show being this robotic version of your boss, essentially? What was it like to kind of craft that? It's funny because I was the most nervous about throwing Marvel under the bus. And like, I was like, but I really love the movies, guys. I'm, I'm afraid, I, you know, and I was afraid that by putting down the movies, we're kind of putting down the fans. And I know how much the fans love the properties. And it was really Kevin and Lou and Victoria who were like, no, it's fine. Don't worry, because they have that essential connection to the audiences and they um, you know, part of their success comes from not being precious and from understanding the conversations. And so any criticism you can lob, we address. And it's awesome. And then another thing I love about the finale is I know you're a fan of the She-Hulk comics and the finale and the breaking the fourth wall clearly draws inspiration from the John Byrne run. Um, how, how was it and what was most important to you in kind of translating these very comic fourth wall breaks into live action? I mean, look, the thing that drew me to the comics, um, in the first place was this idea of, you know, tromping across the advertisements and telling the writers what to do. And so the fact that this was baked into the concept is, is part of what made me so excited about the series as a whole. And knowing we were always going to that place and knowing that we have a character who is self-aware and knows she's on a show, it kind of allows for a lot of license. Like if, if a plot feels contrived or something feels silly, you're like, yeah, but it is, it's a show. And so I feel like you get away with a lot more than you do when you're not so self-aware and meta. And so kind of going off of that, now that Jen has broken the fourth wall in such a major way, and now that she's kind of established herself as a superhero, if the show were to get a second season, what would you be most excited to explore with Jennifer? Oh my gosh, there's so much. I mean, I, look, I love She-Hulk and Daredevil's chemistry. Um, and I, you know, Daredevil has his own show. And so I think those legal worlds are definitely going to collide. I love the idea of Nikki and Pug and Jen having their own law firm. Um, I love the idea of her going to space, <laughs> you know, now she's got a relative who's got family out there. So I think, uh, you know, I think the possibilities are endless and I think only Kevin knows.
<laughs> Only Kevin knows. Um, so kind of going off of that in the finale, Jen does have a line about saving some things for the movie. Um, I, I know we don't necessarily know what that movie is, but if you were given the opportunity to direct that movie, would you take it? A hundred percent. I mean, I think I, I, I've, I said this in the beginning and I still stand by this. One of my favorite things about the whole series is the chemistry between Tatiana and Mark. Um, and their kind of sibling, big brother, little sister dynamic. And I think bringing that to the big screen would be a no brainer. Oh, absolutely. And then I have to ask about your work on another Disney Plus show. Um, is there anything from the experience of She-Hulk that has kind of influenced your work on Spider-Work Chronicles? Look, I am obsessed with Victoria Alonso. And part of what makes me so in awe of her is that as much technical expertise as she has and experience as she has in the VFX world, Everything she does is still very tied to the visceral and the emotional and being able to learn all the skills to create, you know, a heavily CGI influenced show, but hold on to the heart is something that I'm definitely bringing to Spiderwick, which has a lot of CGI and a lot of VFX, but is, um, you know, essentially a story about human beings. I love it. Um, what would you say surprised you the most about the entire experience of being on this show? Because I can imagine that there was probably so much. I mean, I am, I love being one step ahead of the trolls. And when the show <laughs> premiered and I started getting these very nasty messages, I just kind of smiled and was like, just wait guys, because you are in the show and everything that you're doing plays right into our hands. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and congrats on the show. You, you did such a phenomenal job.